Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's ICU. And today we're going to be talking about the iOS 10 jailbreak, both the development of the iOS 10.1.1 jailbreak from hacker Luca Tedesco, and also what to expect moving forward into the future. Unfortunately, there's kind of some disappointing news. However, there's always a flip side to it. And just like everything in life, there are some really awesome things that we can look forward to. Also, I just want to let you guys know that things are going to be disabled on today's video, and I'm actually going to explain why kind of more toward the end of this video. So just be sure to stick around to that if you're at all interested. All right, so let's just go ahead and get straight into this. Now for any of the info we're going to talk about to actually make sense, you have to have already watched the past videos in this series. I will have a link to a special playlist on your screens now via the cards as well as down below in the description because of course we are talking about Luca Tedesco and what he's actually working on specifically the iOS 10.1.1 jailbreak and what it builds upon remember what project zero actually released they disclosed some vulnerabilities to Apple that were patched inside of iOS 10.2 you should already know that so now at this point let's go ahead and just continue right from where we left off so let's start from Luca Tedesco's Twitter quote new releases for Yalu will happen but I am more interested in future restore since it would actually give me devices to test it on. Now there is some interesting stuff going on right now. Last time we talked about what Luke is working on, how it could potentially be related to a downgrade and also the Prometheus downgrade utility that was also released semi-recently. That does work, but it definitely needs blobs. So we'll talk about that in just a second. But what he's talking about right here is that of course new releases are going to happen, but that's not his number one priority right now. He needs more devices to test on. And of course, as many of you know, if you are actually trying to develop a jailbreak for an outdated firmware, that's incredibly difficult because that firmware is no longer being signed by Apple, meaning technically it's not possible to actually restore to it. That's where something like this actually comes into play because of course downgrades are basically impossible these days. Days, which is why something like Prometheus is so rare and why it could really help the jailbreak community moving forward. So let's just proceed straight from this one. Remember, he's not as interested in developing for Yalu anymore. We initially thought that we were already going to get a gamma release. By this point, we have yet to actually see a more stabilized version of the jailbreak released. Of course, I definitely do not recommend that you guys or really anyone who's not a jailbreak developer actually jailbreak on iOS 10 just yet. It's still too unstable, guys, unfortunately nothing's really happened. We haven't had any major new releases or stability improvements yet. In a follow-up, he states, quote, to reiterate, 6S, SE, iPad Pro, iPhone 7, including all plus models are supported, no other device is, and support cannot be added easily. So unfortunately, this likely means that when there is eventually a gamma release, those devices will be the only ones supported. The 6S and 6S Plus, SE, iPad Pro, and iPhone 7 and 7 Plus. That seems to be it. So we should operate under the assumption right now that no other devices will be supported in Gamma, but they should be added by the time we finally get a final release version of this jailbreak for iOS 10.1.1. When that happens, really nobody knows, only Luca himself does. But of course he still needs more devices to be able to test on, and that's where the previous tweet actually comes into play. Also, for those of you who are jailbroken, remember I definitely told you guys you should avoid jailbreaking and this also just aids to that. In addition to it being unstable, Lucas states, quote, there is a pretty serious bug in all Yalu betas that I'd like to fix before adding more support. This also kind of ties back to the gamma release. So once the gamma release actually goes live, we should expect that it should be a little bit more stable and that it also fixes the major bug. Let's go ahead and switch on over to the next one here. He says, quote, also do not install OpenSSH. It is harmless in beta three, but will break SSH on final. So when the final release actually happens, Again, OpenSSH should not be installed. The reason for that is simply because it is not compatible at this point with iOS 10, like a number of things aren't. Because remember, this is still a beta jailbreak. It hasn't been officially designated as a public jailbreak utility. Remember, there is also a pretty serious bug that is very dangerous. And if you were thinking about jailbreaking just because there's not a gamma release, a more stabilized version, or the final one yet, and you just want to jump aboard the hype train, don't 
There are bugs still in this release as Luca himself has highlighted. So let's go ahead and move straight along because again, we are just breezing through some of these tweets. Now he states, quote, fun fact, all current substrate enablers do it wrong. There is no real way to do it right unless the bug I was tweeting about gets fixed. Remember, Luca purposefully disabled substrate because he didn't want anyone messing with it. And then another developer comes along, releases something that essentially enables substrate for iOS 10 jailbreakers. And yeah, guess what? It's great. Everyone can actually install different tweaks, packages, and modifications, but that's not what should be done. It was disabled for a reason. The developer of the jailbreak himself disabled it, and he's even stating that right here, guys. This is, of course, related to the very dangerous bug that exists in all beta versions of the jailbreak. And actually, in a response to someone talking about the yucky utilities developed by the individual who essentially created that workaround, quote, hence why listening to him is dangerous. He's trying to make himself look like he knows he doesn't. Reason for that, again, because yucky utilities utilities essentially is trying to circumvent that bug and just totally ignore it by enabling substrate, utilizing the wrong procedure, and also by installing OpenSSH as a dependency. Remember, according to Luca, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. Luca knows best. Things are disabled and things are the way they are for a specific reason. Luca is definitely a very smart individual as he's proven time and time again. And once things are finally ready, this should be a really fantastic jailbreak for everyone on iOS 10.1.1. We'll get into those on iOS 10.2.x in just a second, but let's go ahead and switch on over here to the next one. In fact, also in response to that, remember guys, this all kind of ties together, which is why I'm featuring these specific tweets in today's video. Quote, full disclosure, iJap whatever zero zero's actions made me way less willing to complete Yalu. So this is the guy that developed that yucky utilities to again re-enable substrate. So this is some pretty unfortunate stuff and this is kind of what I was saying more toward the beginning of this video. Unfortunately, this is some really disappointing news because not only is Luca already not really interested right now at fully finalizing Yalu because of the fact that he's developing for an older firmware and he needs to ensure that he continues to have devices on iOS 10.1.1 to test. But now that this individual is trying to get all of these people, meaning everyone who is just part of the general population that's trying to jailbreak on iOS 10.1.1 to actually get something that was purposefully disabled, functioning, utilizing an incorrect method and taking shortcuts. So this is where things stand right now. And in fact, in relation to iOS 10.2.x, Lucas states, quote, I am just reiterating a previous warning. No 10.2 jailbreak is planned, at least not from him, but still avoid 10.2.1 and save 10.2 blobs. Because again, while the vulnerabilities are definitely patched inside of iOS 10.2, some of the finalizing work that actually comes into play after the initial chain of exploits that are patched inside of 10.2 are triggered still functions on iOS 10.2. So that is important to keep in mind. Again, you should stay on, of course, as low of a firmware as possible, which is what I've always recommended. So if you're currently on iOS 10.2, once 10.2.1 drops, which could very well be this next week, definitely just stay on iOS 10.2 for the time being. The only time you should upgrade to a higher firmware is if a jailbreak is in fact released for it. So yes, I did say there is some positive information. Remember, Pengu's been very silent. They will continue to be silent as official jailbreak developers always do until they eventually drop jailbreak utilities. Now their target has been adjusted over the past weeks and of course months, but we do expect they are likely targeting iOS 10.2.1 for the release of their first iOS 10 jailbreak. So we could finally be liberated very soon and those of you on iOS 10.2 may be able to update to 10.2.1. Do not do it and I repeat, do not do it unless there is a jailbreak released for it, but that should be something super exciting to look forward to. And of course, I will keep you guys fully updated along the way as soon as we do know more because we know Pengu already has the capability of being able to jailbreak iOS 10. There have been some whispers over the past few weeks, particularly from some insiders, that Pengu is very close to finalizing things and dropping a jailbreak. The only thing that they really need now is the proper timing. So like I said, I'll keep you guys updated. Be sure to subscribe if you have yet to. Like me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter for even more frequent updates. Updates. And as to why I have things disabled on today's video, that's just because I am very busy working on some other things.
things right now outside of YouTube jailbreaking and just kind of the iOS game in general. And while I really do want to be able to reply and moderate some of the comments and things that you guys have to say, and of course questions, I just really can't allocate time to that right now. So I just wanted to let you guys know that in case you were wondering. And of course, until next time, this is ICU signing out. Thank <laughs> you.